Um, the first question is for Steel. 100 Thieves is the, uh, is the roster with the most experience when it comes to professional esports lands. With Sentinel's dominance, both in the past Masters in Iceland and online in Stage 3, will the LAN experience be enough to take their number one spot? I'm hoping that we can leverage the experience that we have from LANs, but keeping in mind, LAN can mean many things. So one of the things that we have experience with or specifically not myself, but uh, you know, Nitro, Hiko, and Ethan, they play with big crowds of like, you know, tens of thousands of people, maybe. And for this event, it's gonna be, you know, we can see them. We're in earshot of them. We can't really hear them, but we can see them, we can see the reactions, we can see when they get tilted if we are playing against another team. And I think that plays well for me. I enjoy that experience. I kind of get, I guess, unlocked to a degree by um, playing in that type of situation. So I think that, you know, hopefully that is the type of experience that we need to kind of give us that edge over the other teams that are here and also over Sentinels, for example. Um, this next question will be to Envy Victor. It's from VLR.gg, Diego Santos. Um, how much did you guys improve after you brought Ye on? Um, just from a surface level, Ye is obviously a huge upgrade in terms of firepower. But not just that, he brings his own ideas on how he wants to get his frags, how he wants to be set up. He's like, he's just really good. He's yay. He's, and like people from outside the team don't really see this, but he's really self-sufficient. He really knows how to get his teammates to do what he needs. Or sorry, he knows how to like get, his, get the support he needs from his teammates to get the frags that he needs to get. And he also knows how to get his entry frags and how, how to maneuver around enemy utility. So he's just really good. This next question will be for 100 Thieves Steel uh, from Game Elevate, Ashmir Ahmed. Uh, you are in the same group as Gambit, who are regarded as one of the best defensive teams in the Valorant scene. Do you feel the same? If so, why are they so good in your opinion? Um, I can't really talk too much about, you know, what makes them so good or, or what type of kind of things we're going to do in order to combat them. Um, obviously, they're a really strong team and, and they've done really well to to get to this point. And I think we've done really well to get to ourselves to this point as well. So I think uh, without giving too much away, we're just going to have to do our best and hopefully that, you know, our attack side, which is, I think our stronger side, statistically speaking, I, I think we just have to hope that our attack is strong enough to break through the defenses. Uh, this next question will be for Envy Victor from VLR.gg, Diego Secaria Santos. With this being your first major international LAN abroad since Sydney in 2019, how does competing here compare to then or any other international tournament that you attended in your CS career? I would say it's kind of the same, even though it's been so long. Like, yeah, we're at a LAN, but there's no crowd. And in my opinion, the crowd is the biggest thing, or sorry, the biggest part of a LAN and what makes it so different. Yeah, the game like might be played slightly different. Like you can hold more angles, but the crowd really gets the adrenaline going. And if people get nervous, it's the crowd that's making people nervous. This next question is for VK Heat from VLR.gg. Being such a new squad and made up of free agents that hadn't played together before, how did it feel to win the number one seed and prove all the doubters wrong? Sendo que a equipa foi novamente formada e vocês entraram na competição há pouco tempo. Como é que é a sensação de provar os outros de rádio? É, eu acredito que é, nossa equipe tem muito, é, muito pouco tempo, mas que a gente tem grandes jogadores de vários jogadores de, de outros times e a gente se deu bem por causa disso. Um, I think we did really well, even though our team is new, we have a lot of really good players and we put the work in. This is, next question is for Victor from Feng Bao Nai Ba from China. Uh, recently, you and your team Envy had a good performance. Could you share with us why you changed your ID? I mean, from food change to Victor. What's your goal about this land? Uh, sorry, what was the last part? Uh, why did you change your ID and what is your goal for this land? I changed my ID because I didn't like it. That's it, plain and simple. Uh, as far as the goal for this land, we're here to win it. And... If it's not us, then we would really like an NA team to win because we're not trying to play the LCQ. Uh, and this question will be for Steel. What do you expect from Havan Liberty, your first opponent? 
we expect them to have some pretty good protocols and, and setups. I think they're, um, you know, in terms of strategy, they have a lot of cool things going on. So we're going to have to make sure that we just make sure that we are playing our game as well as we can, make sure all of our fundamentals are in check, make sure that uh, we're reading the situation properly. And then I think that based off our experiences and our skill level, I think we should be able to handle them decently well. We will now pivot to questions from the remote media. We will begin with Declan from Upcomer. Uh, hi, yeah, this is for Steel. I was wondering what you thought about the triple initiator compositions that Havan Liberty has recently adopted on bind and ascent and just triple initiator compositions in general. I actually like the triple initiator compositions. I think that they could be really strong if done really well. Um, I think there's, there's a lot of different pacings that you can do. You can play slow, you can play fast, uh, you can get a lot of information. I think that it's a very flexible type of composition and it's something that I even had the idea of like experimenting with myself. And, um, you know, even on certain maps, we've, we've shown that we do that with KO, Sky and Sova. I think that uh, there's obviously downsides to every composition that you can run. There's gonna be holes. You're just gonna have to figure out what's best for our play style what's going to be our win condition and what's going to be things that are going to be able to break us. And then you kind of just try to manage everything as you go along. This team's going to try to exploit this weakness. So we need to have an answer for that. So whether it's us or them running a three initiator composition, you just need to manage everything, manage the risks that you have and, and do your best with it. And then play to the strengths of that composition. Uh, we will now go to Lucas Gerardi from ESPN Esports Brazil. Uh, are you guys hearing me? Yes. Okay. Can I ask the question directly in Portuguese? Please go ahead. Uh, Hitch, essa pergunta para você, obviamente. É, eu queria saber como que você está vendo o nível competitivo desse Masters e se você acha que vocês estão bem preparados para se apresentar. É, eu acho que esse Masters está sendo um campeonato com mais nível internacional é, de de todas as equipes do campeonato. É, acho que vai ser o, o mais times de todo melhor de todas as regiões. E o campeonato do, muito, com a expectativa muito boa. E é isso. Fechou, valeu. Um, so the question was if uh, Heat feels that the team is ready to take on the championship of this level. And the answer is that, um, of course, this is at the highest level. Everyone is bringing their A game, but he has very great expectations and thinks they're at the same level. This next question will be from Shay Robson from Deserto. Hi, uh, this question is for Steel, and I just want to know, um, base, 100 Thieves isn't considered to be the best team in North America. Uh, that would be Sentinels. I'm just wondering what's going to be different this time around coming in as the second North American seed. And if you do get matched up with Sentinels, you know, how are you going to be from this time around? I think in previous matchups with Sentinels, we've definitely, um, you know, there's been games uh, or maps within a series that we've been actually blown out by them, but we've also played them really close on other maps. We've narrowly lost them in the Qualifier for Iceland, for example, by uh, two 13 to 11 losses. We've lost them in overtime, I believe. Uh, once in this last close qualifier, we even lost them on uh, on Bind, which is, you know, one of their stronger maps and in, in recent times, one of their stronger maps and one of our weaker ones. Uh, when, you know, a few months before that, it was one of our stronger maps and one of their weaker ones. So I think that obviously it's not like they come in and 13 five us every time. I think that all we need to do is make sure that we convert the rounds that we're supposed to convert. Don't let them win so many clutch rounds, pistol rounds. We need to make sure that we don't have like a really bad zero to six start to the game. I think that that's pretty much the trend in every time we play them in a series is that first map of the series, we start zero six down. And then from there, it's like we're playing a comeback. And I think that if we don't do that, if we're able to start strong, take that first map, I think that's probably our best bet into securing a series against them. Uh, this next question will be from Jessica Sharnagel from Nerd Street Gamers. 
Hi, thank you. Um, uh, Shazam said earlier in the press conference that he thinks that there will be an EU team in the grand final. Um, do you think that he is right or not? And I would like to know why. And this is for um, Victor and Steele. Uh, I don't think that's too far off to say. I mean, yeah, whatever. People may say NA is the best region, but it's Valorant. Anyone can win in the game. Valorant is only 13 rounds to win. You have ultimates in this game that can guarantee rounds pretty easily. So I would say that's not pretty far off to say that any EU team that's coming to Berlin or that's in Berlin now can easily be in the grand final. Yeah, just to piggyback off of what Victor said, I think that in this game, there are a lot of things that you can do that swing momentum a lot. And because there's 13 rounds that you have to get to, and then, you know, pistol round is a big component of that. It's with all the different styles, all the different compositions that you can run, all the different types of tactics and strategies that you can run. I think that there's uh, straight up, um, you can have certain matchups that are more favorable than others. So even though, you know, Sentinels or one of the European teams might be very strong, maybe they're only strong against certain types of styles or certain types of compositions. And then there's like a rock, paper, scissors type of situation where, you know, you're really good at, you know, if you're rock, you're really good at smashing scissors, but you know, if a team comes in their paper, then you you're going to lose. So I think in this game, because it's so hard to prepare against all sorts of different types of, uh, teams and you know teams that have different styles from different regions and everyone's pretty good i think that anything can happen in terms of like i don't even think at iceland we saw the best uh you know representation from europe i feel like the representation this time around might be you know slightly better even you also have more teams so i think that it's definitely possible that we see a, a european team maybe there's no north american teams Maybe it's double North American teams. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, this next question will be from Rishab Chakladar, Sports Kita. Hello. Uh, so Riot has made some key changes to some of the agents like KJ, Rays, Breach, and Bream. So just be one day before the tournament, do you think it will affect the participating teams in the Masters? And the question is for all of you. Sorry, what? So the the changes that just happened more recently, or sorry, can you repeat the second half of that question? Yeah, sure. Uh, the question is, my question is the it is just came just one day before the uh, tournament starts. So, do you think that uh, it will affect the other teams and all of you? Those changes aren't live currently, right? Yeah, those changes aren't going to be used in this tournament the, the the more recent changes aren't going to be in the current tournament we're going to be using a patch line that's a little bit uh older and more stable so those changes shouldn't be in effect right now oh okay okay sure uh we will then go to rook from globo all right uh my question are for Stu and victor since they're playing brazilian teams in their first games i would like to know what they expect and what they know from the brazilian scene I haven't taken too close of an eye on the Brazilian scene. Um, I know kind of vaguely about like the types of styles that they do and the types of compositions. So uh, I've, I've played against uh, Brazilian competitors in Counter-Strike though, and I know how skilled they are in that game and I know how passionate they are as well. So I need to make sure that uh, when we go in, we, we can't let them get a momentum swing because that's, that's what they want if they start pulling rounds together then they're going to get fired up and they're they're going to be pumping each other up and they're going to be playing even better. So you got to stop them right at the start and just be like, no, not going to happen. Yeah, I agree with what he said. Um, when they get a good start, you can really tell, especially on land, Brazilian teams have a lot of energy when they play together, especially when they win huge, important swing rounds. So, I mean, we're not going to underestimate anyone. Like, we know, we understand that anyone can win in this game, like, easily because everyone's pretty skilled. Everyone can be compared in skill. Yeah, there's some players that have exceptional skill, but in general, this game doesn't really have too much of a, doesn't really have a high mechanical ceiling. Anyone can shoot back and it all depends on how well the teams are playing together. Uh, this next question will be from Wesley Pereira from the Clutch Esports. Hi everyone. And can I ask my question in Portuguese for hit? 
Go ahead. Okay. Rich, essa é para você. Vamos lá. Uh, uh -huh, bora. Alguns dias atrás, o Vixen tinha falado sobre um in-house que vocês tiveram a oportunidade de jogar com outros jogadores aí da região. E saindo um pouco disso, perguntar a questão de treinos. Vocês têm conseguido marcar treinos para que vocês conseguem se preparar da melhor maneira possível para esse Masters? Uh, com certeza, a gente vem treinando muito aqui na Europa, desde que a gente chegou. Uh, tivemos, acho que, seis dias de treino, mais ou menos, uh, contra todos os times da Europa já. E, e é isso, acredito que a gente está saindo bem nos treinos e que a gente vai dar o nosso melhor no campeonato. So the question was if um, the team has had a lot of time to practice for this championship. And Heat answered saying that, yes, as soon as they arrived here, they've been practicing for six days at least. And they have already played against all um, European teams. Uh, the next question will be from Dustin Steiner from esports.gg. Hey, uh, this question is for Steel. Um, obviously, you uh, you haven't played in a major like international land like in CS in a long time out of New Year ban. What does this mean to you personally to be competing at the highest level in another game? And like, do you feel any additional pressure to like kind of cement that redemption story and like you know go to Worlds and or sorry Champions and uh, you know kind of show people that you're you're here and you haven't gone away? Yeah, I'm not really doing it for other people. I'm doing it for myself. I know that I'm capable of it. So uh, whatever I do here, obviously it feels good to play at a, a larger event. Um, it's not the same without a crowd. Obviously it's not due to any circumstances that any of us can really control. Um, but I've, I've played at international events before and they're actually like so much more fun than, you know, anything. you go back home and you play online and it's just like, it's not even the same game. It's completely different. So obviously being here, it's going to bring more, I guess, energy, more passion, more everything to me, just like to do it, to be here. It's, it's way more fun. It's way more engaging. And uh, I, yeah, I'm just going to do it for myself, basically. Uh, this next question will be from Diego Santos from VLR.gg. Hey, uh, I've got a question for Heat. So how much do you think the level of Brazil has improved since Reykjavik? And what are you bringing to show that? Um, Heat, como é que você acha que o nível do, das equipas brasileiras evoluiu desde o último campeonato em Reykjavik? E o que é que vocês vão trazer para mostrar a competição? Uh, eu acho que, o, como o pessoal já falou também, já vejo muito pessoal falando, que o nível que, que a gente está aqui no Brasil, que a gente está trazendo, é, na minha opinião, está sendo melhor que do passado. Eu acredito que, para o Brasil ter competido no, na Islândia, meio que a gente deu a entender, entender um pouco mais o jogo e ver como que funciona as coisas aqui. E qual, qual a última parte? Desculpa. Uh, what was the second part of the question? Can you repeat the second part of the question? Uh, yeah, what will your team bring to show that uh, Brazil has improved? E como é que a sua equipa vai mostrar que o Brasil melhorou? O que vão trazer? A competição? É, acho que o improviso. É, nós, nosso time é, tem muito improviso e a gente se dá muito bem nisso. Já acho que a equipe da Van eles é, tá, traz um, um estilo mais tático e, e é muito bom. São duas coisas diferentes, dois estilos diferentes. E, e é muito bom para o Brasil. Acho que, que a gente vai sair bem aqui. Speaking about his own team, um, he is saying that they're very good at improvising and thinking on their feet. Havan uh, Liberty is a bit more tactical and both have their, their strengths, but they're ready to show up. Uh, the next question will be from Aaron Down, the loadout. Hi, so uh, my question is for Victor. Uh, Victor, Envy brought Ye in barely a week before the stage three playoffs. You know, obviously bringing in El Diablo, a bit of a bit of a calculated risk. And despite that quick turnaround, the team has obviously made it to Masters. Now, you've had a little bit more time together. So I was just wondering what kind of level do you feel the teams at right now coming into the tournament? And how do you feel you stack up against the other teams? Um, it's hard to gauge the level we're at without like having played any tournaments or had any results, but I mean, we can't get worse, right? So uh, we're definitely better. Um, sorry, what was the second part? Uh, just more. So how do you feel you stack up against? Oh, wait. 
No, that was the first part. Uh, just the kind of level you're at and how do you feel you stack up against the other teams at the tournament? Uh, I think we're at a pretty similar level. Uh, Zeno is the best team right now in NA, or sorry, not in NA, but in the world currently. And I don't think we're too far from them. So I think that's a good like way to measure how well we stack up against other teams. I don't think we're... I don't think we're like significant, significantly worse than any other team here. Uh, the next question will be from Alan Guy from China. Hi, and this question is for Stu. So as one of the earliest player in Master Berlin, so what are the pros and cons of, of early in age and in pro experience? Pro experience is obviously good for being able to get through and navigate all the things that come with, you know, playing on, a, playing on a professional level, which is, you know, sometimes you'll be traveling. Sometimes you have like really long hours. Sometimes you need to be accessible, you know, as if you're an on-call doctor and you need to just be like, Oh, I need to post this. I need to respond to this. I need to schedule this, whatever. Um, so obviously having experience at that. So you're not just thrust into the, this brand new world of all this stuff. And you're just kind of figuring it all out all at once. It definitely helps. Um, as with regards to like performance or anything like that, the only thing is it's, it changes your real life obligations. So when you're 20 years old, 18 years old, 16, 17 years old, you don't really have that many responsibilities. You don't really have that much going on. You can, you know, dedicate so much time to just like sinking it into playing the game, but you don't really get that luxury anymore. The older you get, uh, especially if you want to kind of do other things with your life. So it's it creates a more complicated balance of how you're going to not only do the esports job, do what you need to do and make sure that you're good enough to like continue doing it, putting in enough time, making sure that you're managing that correctly, but then managing the other aspects of your life where you're able to, you know, have enough nutrition and have enough sleep and have enough, you know, outside interests and hobbies and doing whatever else you need to do to have a balanced lifestyle. Uh, we will take five more questions because we're running out of time. Uh, we will go with Lucas Girardi from ESPN Esports Brazil. Uh, I'll do the question in Portuguese once, once again, ok? Uh, Rich, queria saber de você, mano. O que, que, como que você acha que vai ser esse primeiro jogo contra a Envy? E também que você falasse um pouco do seu estilo de jogo, né? Porque aqui no Brasil, pelo menos, a gente vê você ba fazendo bastante uso da Operator. E eu queria saber como que você acha que esse seu estilo de jogo vai, vai funcionar contra os times internacionais? É, aqui na Europa, a gente vem treinando muito nesse estilo de, de jogo que a gente fazia no Brasil. E vem dando certo nos treinos, já... Já estamos experimentando esse, esse estilo de jogo. E eu acredito que contra a Envy vai ser um, um jogão. É, o pessoal da Envy são muito experiente, jogadores muito bons. E não mais é isso. So, the question is um, how Heat feels about the first game against Envy. How is that going to work out with considering uh, the style of this team? And the answer was that they've been practicing a lot and staying true to their own style. It's going to be an amazing game against Envy. They're all very experienced and great players. So they're going to put on a show. Uh, we will now go with Dagger from Gfinity Esports. Uh, we're not getting any audio from you. Going, going, moving on to the next question. Uh, let's go with um, Diego Santos from VLR.gg. Uh, I forgot to remove my hand again. I'm so sorry. Uh, let's go with Brandon from Run It Back. Uh, thank you. The question is for Heat, kind of follows up on the improvement of Brazil as a region in Valorant. Um, we're seeing two you know, different teams represent here in Berlin than we did uh, in Iceland, uh, when it comes to the overall improvement of the region, it's, it's clear that Brazil is, is diverse and quite strong when it comes to the game. In terms of motivation, are you here uh, to represent your region and show that Brazil can hang with the rest of the world? Or is it more that you personally want to show that your team is one of the best? 
Em termos de motivação para este campeonato, vocês chegaram para, apesar de agora em Berlim serem duas, dois times diferentes do que foi em Reykjavik, vocês querem mostrar na mesma qualidade do Brasil enquanto região ou mais dar provas da sua própria time? Eu acho que, que a gente está aqui no campeonato para jogar a gente, o nosso jogo. Uh, eu acredito que não importa isso, acho que a gente não coloca um, um peso atrás disso, tipo, de representar melhor que os times que vieram em, na Islândia e, e jogaram. Acho que a gente não pensa dessa forma. Eu acredito que, que é isso. We here to play the game as a team. We don't need to um, prove anything and there's no weight to to say that we're carrying Brazil or showing Brazil. We want to play as a team. Uh, the next question will be from Declan from Upcomer. Uh, yeah, this is for Victor. I was just wondering if you had any opinions on the extended rosters that some of the Asian teams and crew are coming into the tournament with, especially since some of them are agent specialists and really quicken up the pace of their play styles, like uh, Barca on Zeta Division, who comes in and just plays Omen or Brimstone. Um, I don't really have any thoughts. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> They get to have 10 players and each player has their own role. It's kind of advantage, advantageous in my opinion, but in my opinion, all five players on a team should be able to play more than one role and, and at, a, at a high level too. So I don't know. They have an advantage, I guess. I don't know. Uh, we will now pivot to questions from the on-site media. Go ahead, Thomas. Wait. Uh, my question is for uh, all the players, um, assuming that you all think you're going to make it out of your group, which is the other team that you expect to make it out of your group? I think Gambit from our group would be the choice that most people would think. Um, I agree with that. I think they're pretty strong, and I think, obviously, we're making it out. Okay. Assuming that... Que... Passa a próxima fase, o que vence esse grupo, que outro time é que acha que também vai passar? É, desculpa? Outro time que também passará a próxima fase. Do nosso grupo? Sim. Uh, talvez a Envy. Maybe. Ou, ou a Cru. Maybe Envy. Or a Cru. Uh, I think Vivo will make it out uh, besides us. And then Thomas will have the final question of the press conference. Uh, yeah, my question uh, is for Steel. Um, obviously, you come in here with a lot of experience. Um, what have you noticed so far from being here and maybe playing with other teams in their growth um, that you can compare to your own growth? We haven't had too much time in Berlin yet to practice against other teams from this event or, or teams from Europe in general, uh, just because of the schedule that we've had when we've arrived with other obligations. Um, Obviously, like when when you when we started playing this game, I only started playing about this time last year. There's been a lot of changes in the game. Uh, the maps been maps have been played differently. We've seen the inclusion of Icebox and Breeze. We've seen the inclusion of a, a whole bunch of different agents, and then agents got nerfed or buffed, and people play the agents differently. So this entire time, like every two three months, there's going to be a shift in the meta where you guys like everyone has to keep up. Everyone, you can't kind of just like slack off. So you're always innovating. You're always kind of like learning different things. You're always learning uh, how to implement things that you see other teams doing and applying it to your own gameplay. So it's like a constant thing that's never going to stop um, unless Riot for some reason stops like putting game updates out, which I don't think they're going to do. I think it's like one of those things that you, you got to kind of keep up or you're going to fall off. And I, I think that's that's pushes every team to have to like learn and improve and, and keep up with everything. Thank you. This will conclude the press conference. Thank you to the players.